I feel like I know a lot. I read the books, I did the workshops. I know what to do, but I don't do what I know. Well, law of attraction is the reason that these habits of thought are hard to break because you've been thinking them and that has created something to observe and then you observe it which keeps that momentum going and so knowing the laws of the universe is one thing being aware of the way you feel and caring enough to do something about it is another it really comes down to when life brings you to a decision point where you decide I'm gonna be less of an observer and more of a deliberate intender I'm gonna be less observing and more defining and deciding tell us more what's going on if I put it on a piece of paper I know exactly what to do to get myself out of this trap called life mm. <laughs> does feel like that doesn't it it's yeah I'm trapped we used these words the other day we said the law of attraction can be punishing in that it keeps bringing you more of what you've got because that's what's on your mind all the time so the key is how can I get what I've got off my mind how can I be more anticipating Esther's been writing some words down because she's forever refining her point of attraction she thinks she understands it and then something will happen and she will realize she understands it but she didn't apply it in that case or in that case and so the other day she came across the word wonder and she thought oh that's a soft word I wonder there's not much resistance in that I wonder I wonder and so what you're looking for you're looking for better feeling vantage points that's all so this trap called life that's quite a statement when it feels like life has you trapped well not inaccurate I've got what I've got and I'm thinking about what I've got and I keep getting more of what I've got feels like I'm in a trap how are you gonna get out you gotta look somewhere else easy to say right easy to say for somebody who's not in the trap give us more I'm trapped within this patterns of can you hear clearly patterns of being overwhelmed serving everybody being there in a reaction for everything that life throws at you uh, being a mother having a job running many things at the same time yeah. so then when you read the, when I read the book I feel like oh I'm so enlightened I know exactly what I have to do you wake up tomorrow and you get sucked in back again to the same exact well you do because you've got a bag of marbles we've been describing every thought you've ever thought still exists but they're not all active at the same time so what's active we've been describing is like taking a bag of marbles everywhere you go and the active ones are what represent your point of attraction and other people are showing up with their bags of marbles and you're sort of playing off one another but you're gonna find everyone this is gonna be really beneficial so just play with us a little bit here because it isn't as hard as it feels you just got to find the right vibe so to speak so you wake up and give us a sort of slow description of stepping into that day that feels like a trap when too much is coming at you just feed it to us a little piece at a time and we're going to comment on what you could do that would make it a little better mm -hmm. so I kept in the morning so I sleep with the intention of waking up at five in the morning to do my meditation to set up the day right then my body is tired and I won't woke up at five I wake up at right on time at six to get okay so we'll just tell you that over time sometimes Esther's meditated and done her processes and sometimes she doesn't and she has more luxury for most of her days than you do because there isn't some place that she has to be every single day there are a lot of days that are intense but not all of them so what she began to notice because words didn't teach her life experience did she started noticing that on the day that she took the time to meditate the day just went better so it was like 
it wasn't something that was assigned to her. It's like if you eat something that gives you a stomach ache, don't eat it. And if you get inebriated and you have some bad experiences, pay attention to what you're doing. If you're over caffeinated, cut back. And if you're too tired, try to sleep a little more because what you're going for, how you feel is what you're getting. So yeah, you're tired and you are really justified in being tired. In other words, if people saw the list of things that you were doing, when you talk about all the people that you have to serve or all the people that you feel responsible for, we get that, we know that, but we also know you like helping people. We also know that a lot of what you do, you don't have to do, you just want to do it. We know that there's a lot of it that is rewarding. So what you want to do is sift out the rewarding part and amplify that and diminish the part that you feel like you have to do. There's stuff you've got to do in order to prevent negative consequences. Well, that's never very satisfying stuff. But when you get that turned around and you're doing it not to prevent something negative from happening, but to promote something that you prefer and you start noticing how it turns, we call it priming the pump. If you hold an intention to meditate and you don't meditate, then you feel bad because you didn't meditate. And so you're actually promoting not feeling good. And so you did that and it didn't feel good and you did it again and it didn't feel good and you did it again and it didn't feel good and you do it often and it doesn't feel good. Well, it's time to decaffeinate, so to speak. It's time to not say you're going to do it and then not do it. Either stop saying you're going to do it or say you're going to do it and do it. It is simple balance of energies. That's all it is. So let's say that you said you were going to do it and you didn't do it. And now the day isn't going that well, but even more, you feel bad because you said you were going to do it. It's kind of the attitude that you had. I read the books. I am enlightened, but then I don't follow through. Just think how good it's going to feel when you follow through on something. Say to yourself, I'm going to sit for 10 minutes and I'm just going to quiet my mind. 15 if I can find them, but 10 minutes and then say, well, I haven't been getting up to do it. I'm just going to open my eyes for a minute, realize I'm awake, and I'm just going to lie right here in bed, awake, alive, alert, and I'm going to quiet my mind on purpose while I lie here in bed. And then do it. And then feel good that you did it. That's all. That's enough vibrational change to bring a different result from that day which you are going to notice this is how you get momentum moving differently that's all what else talk to us about the helping the kids the helping the others the serving the others the go to work talk to us about some of that so then I get up um, all right so I get up now don't make that sound like a burden yeah <laughs> there are people who can't get up yes that would really like to be able to get up. So I get up, I get up, not I get up, I get up, I get up, I get up. We know you're just trying to set the stage, we know. But Esther will wake up and she'll say, oh, it's today. And then her next thought is, where am I? Because it could be a lot of different places and what's up, but get up, sit up, put your feet on the floor and kind of step into the day with some attitude of control. All right, so I get up and then what? I get up, get the girls ready for school. All right, I get the girls ready for the school. How many of them are there? Two. And how old are they? 15 and 11. So how much getting ready? Do you say put one foot in here and put one foot in here? <laughs> are they getting their own clothes on? They get their own clothes on. All right, so what's this martyrdom? I get my kids ready for school. I literally get their what? Bre breakfast and lunch ready. All right, so that's different than getting them ready for school. I got kids that get themselves ready for school. That's something to think about. My kids get themselves ready for school. That's not something that you do. That's not something for you to worry about, is it? Can't you delegate that to the universe? My kids get dressed. Delegate it to them, delegate it to the universe. We got all these things going on. I didn't have to make the sun come up. I didn't have to make gravity work today. My transportation is still in place and my kids got ready for school. That's something we're thinking about. So can you feel your martyrdom, your victimhood lifting off of you just a little bit? 
So do you really not want to fix them breakfast? Do you want them to do it? Have they ever done it? No. If they did it, what would that be like? I would love it. What do you fix? What do you fix? I need to delegate it. Maybe. Say what? I need to delegate it. No, no, we're asking you, what do you make for breakfast? Uh, it depends on the day. So I have a full schedule. So it's either eggs and, and bread. And Is bread. anything hard? Cheerios are really easy and they're so good. So, so that's part of my... One of my problems is being perfectionist. So I need to feed them the right food. I need to cook it. But see what you got going on is I need to do these things, but I've got too many of them to do. That's exactly where Esther was when we said delegate it to the universe. Delegate it, delegate it, delegate it. Jerry used to say, Esther, you do too much for too many people. I'm not talking about me. Because he really liked all the things that she did for him. But everybody else should take care of their own damn selves. Well, do you want to empower your children? Mm -hmm. In the same way that you say, I'm going to meditate. And then when you do it, you feel better. When you say, I want to empower my children and you do, you'll feel better. You're not empowering your children when you're doing things for them that they could do for themselves. What do you think the reason might be? It's all right. A whole bunch of people are doing the same thing. But why do you think that this perfectionism is stuck in you? In other words, we wouldn't call you striving for perfection, although we get why you would say that. You're picky about stuff and you do it well. But we think that a bigger thing is that it's like you need to justify your existence through your struggle. Because you're like so many of the billions of the people on the planet. You don't really get it that abundance is raining down because it's like everybody's got their umbrella up and they're not getting any of the abundance that's raining down. And so it's this whatever it is that you got to prove, but it's not working. You feel like crap. You don't even want to get out of bed. You can't even get up 15 minutes early to meditate because your sleep feels so precious to you. You're so resistant about stepping into the day. And the reason that you're resistant about stepping into the day is because the day doesn't feel good. And the reason the day doesn't feel good is people aren't doing, they're not being empowered. You're not a slave or a servant. Your girls, your kids are not going to love you more because you serve them. They feel better about themselves the more they are able to do on their own. They want you to show them and to teach them and to delegate to them. In other words, don't you remember being little? You just couldn't wait to get people out of the way so that you could. Don't you remember pushing people away? You wanted to put your own shoes on. You wanted to tie your own shoes and you wanted to do your own stuff. You want to be like a big person and you want to be a delegator extraordinaire. You want to be a master of your space. You want to love your space. You want to be eager in your space. You want everybody to help you in your space. You want people to feel proud of their part in your space. These are intentions that you hold that you're not following through on. And that's what's got you all balled up. Tell us about your girls. Are they girls, did you say? And tell us about the 15-year-old. Is she good at stuff? Very good. What's she good at? She's good at school. Yeah. She's good at... So, do you go to school with her? No. So, you've delegated school to somebody else. <laughs> so, that's really good. We're not making fun of you. We're just pointing out that you let go, she went, and she's thriving. We think she could thrive making some egg. And we think the way you'll feel when she does it will be a big reward for both of you. It will be a win-win. <laughs> Make eggs for the 11-year-old, he says. What else? Now, this all sounds like a lot of shoulda, woulda, coulda. Everybody can make a list and crack the whip. Esther does that to herself every now and again. She computerizes everything and then makes herself a slave to it until life isn't fun anymore. And then she just sets it all aside and starts following her impulses again. Lie in bed and play this game. Tomorrow I'm going to get up and I'm going to put my feet on the floor and I'm going to revel in realizing it's a new day because this is going to be a day when I'm going to delegate something I don't usually delegate. Now, you might want to warn them the night before. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next